So uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Start and I'm a, a partner in our uh, family firm at Start & Co Estate Agents in Newquay. So uh, we've been uh, sponsoring the Fist Festival for 10 years now uh, uh, and headline sponsor for all of that time. Well, it's really important as a, as a local family firm. We've been here since 1977 to support the local community and being part of the Fish Festival has been a really uh, vital part of us, our support for the town and more importantly the harbour uh, for all of those 10 years. Well, over the 10 years that we've been involved in it, it's been uh, really interesting to see it grow uh, and change in the way it's done. Uh, uh, but most importantly, it's been uh, really good to see more people get involved, more local businesses get involved, uh, and more people come down to enjoy it year on year. Well, my favourite thing about the Fish Festival is the people. Uh, it's all about Newquay coming together after the season, uh, sort of mid-September. We're very, very lucky to have very good weather most of the time, so it's really nice to see a lot of Newquay people down there enjoying themselves, coming down to, to spend time at the harbour. Good morning and good evening from this wonderful place, Newquay Harbour in the beautiful county of Cornwall in this fantastic country of England. We're here today to tell you all about what's happening and welcome you to our 2020 Newquay Virtual Fish Festival and what a year we've all had. Um, I'm sure you're all appreciative of everything that's been done by everybody to be able to put on this Newquay Virtual Fish Festival. We've got some great things lined up for you this evening. You're going to enjoy them but at the same time we've got to say a big thank you to everybody down the harbour, the pillars of Newquay Harbour which is the harbour users, so harbour users. We've got the RNLI, we've got the uh, rowing club and of course the Seaman's Mission and all the various traders who operate from here with their boats, taking people out on trips. They've all been busy, they've all had the, the problems with Covid but here we are now able for once to be able to put on for you the New Key 2020 Virtual Fish Festival. I'd like to now to take you over to some of the wonderful pictures that we've been able to bring from our library of fantastic pictures that you've sent in and we have on, on record of the fish festival over the years. So we started 18 years ago, we got some great pictures of those and at the same time you're going to be able to listen to the wonderful sounds of our very own Fiddle Me Timbers. the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. On the troubled waters under restless skies you can see that body more queer and dive. Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. Won't you ride the winds and go white seabird? Ride the winds and go molly more. Southern Ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. Now the Molly boat glides on those great white wings, and Lord, what a lonely song he sings. Down upon the Southern Ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. He's got no compass and he's got no gear. Nobody knows how the Molly boat steers. Down on the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. Won't you ride the winds and go white seabird? Ride the winds and go molly mook. Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. On the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. He's got no haven and he's got no home, bound evermore for to wheel and roam. Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. Won't you ride the winds and go, white seabird? Ride the winds and go, Molly Moore. 
on the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. When I get too old and can sail no more, cast me adrift far away from shore. Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn. Hi, I'm Councillor Lewis Gardner, the Mayor of Newquay, and I'd like to welcome you to the virtual fish festival uh, down here in Newquay Harbour. It's not the festival that we expected, it's not what we're used to, We'd, this place would normally be full of people by now, but unfortunately, um, because of the restrictions ar around the pandemic and COVID-19, we've moved into the virtual environment. There's still a lot to do, there's some fantastic activities, we've still got all our chefs, we've still got some great music, and we're just enjoying it in a slightly different way this year. Next year, we'll be back bigger and better than ever, right back here in the harbour. You can see Newquay Harbour is still thriving, very much bustling, um, and fish and the fishing industry is very much part of Newquay life. So it just falls on me now to say um, welcome, and I declare this virtual fish festival open. Okay, people, it's good to see everybody here. I uh, hope um, everybody's tuned in to this virtual uh, fish festival we're trying to uh, get together for all you people. There's a little bit of the old uh, Christopher Cross for you. A little song called uh, Ride Like the Wind it goes a bit like this. Nowhere to sleep, nowhere to run, nowhere to love, nowhere to come. I gotta ride like the wind to be free again. And I got such a long way to go to take it to the borders of Mexico. So I ride, ride like the wind. Okay, guys, had a bit of uh, has about a bit of, uh, bit of wonderful tonight. Goes a bit like this. It's 
late in the evening She's wondering what dress to wear She picks up the hairbrush Brushes the long blonde hair And then she asks me Does she look okay? Said my darling You look wonderful We go to a party And everyone starts to see This wonderful lady She's out there walking with me And then she asks me Does she look okay? Said my darling You look wonderful tonight Everybody turns and sees This wonderful lady She's out there walking with me And then she asks me Does she look okay? Said my darling You look wonderful tonight You look wonderful Cause I see the blood in your eyes And the beauty of it all Is that I just don't realize How much I love you But it's time to go home now I've got such an can head Give her the car keys She helps me into bed Then I tell her I'm the turn of the light I said, my darling You look wonderful tonight My darling, you look wonderful tonight My darling, you look wonderful All right, uh, Phil Trebilcock, um, founder of Nuki Fish Festival. Here we are on the, which would have been the final day of the Fish Festival. Once again, lovely weather, as is every year. Several people here now, but I'm sure if the festival was on, there would be thousands of people here. Um, but owing to this COVID business, and I think everybody would be glad when this year is over, um, we would have been looking forward to a very nice festival, but... There we are, we, we can't help it and we just got to go with it. And so this year we're going virtual, which is a bit different for everybody. Um, it's come a long way since 2003, when it was literally put together in a month. We borrowed tables, we borrowed a kitchen, we only had two marquees. Um, and now we take up most of the car park. but. It is the second biggest event, I think, in Newquay. It's free, everybody enjoys it, the atmosphere is lovely. I think it's because it's relaxed, it makes, it makes the weekend. And not just visitors, I think locals come down as well, and there's plenty of chat and yarn going on. So I think it's good for everybody. I'd like to wish everybody a nice fish festival, although it's virtual, you'll see a little bit of the harbour. A little bit of demonstration from our local restaurants and fishmongers and, and you might be lucky and get a couple of songs from Rowan Club singers. 
And this is fantastic. Here we are, Sunday morning, September, start of what is the Virtual Newquay Fish Festival 2020. I'm on the balcony of the Harbour Fish and Grill, and we're going to be doing some cooking here with our fantastic chef, Aaron Janes, who's helped us out so many times, at not helped us out, been the star of the show, really, at the Harbour Fish and Grill, um, at the Newquay Virtual Fish Festival. So morning, we're Andrew. Have. Good You're morning. Right? We can't do that. No, We've got to it's, separate. A, yeah, it's a virtual handshake. Yes. Virtual yeah, handshake. Yeah. We're trying to abide. We will abide with all the COVID restrictions. So we've put everything on the online. We gave, um, asked people to take part. Welcome to all those guys who are actually cooking along with us. They've had their boxes from Fresh Point. Our wonderful veg people in town. They How many delivered do you them. think we got? I don't know, really. Maybe they'll Loads. let us know. Maybe Loads. they'll let us know. We've put the uh, menu out on our Fish Festival good, website. Good. So here it is. We've got it here in front of us. <laughs> Should you not know what you're cooking, I better get it right cooking, then. <laughs> you better get it right because I hope people are going to be watching. <laughs> okay, and, yeah. And well, and they're going to see. So these are the things. So we've got two me menus, two okay, recipes. Okay, well, we're going to start off with uh, a moule marinière at uh -huh. the Harbour Way. Okay. So what we have, we've got some uh, some mussels. Lo when I say local mussels, they're from St. Austell. Brilliant. I believe they're the best, you know, in Cornwall. So these are the, these are the bad boys that we're going to be using. They've been uh, washed and de-bearded. Okay, what I mean okay. by de-bearded, all the hairs have been taken off them so they're nice and clean. Okay, so that's not going to take the tank the sauce at all. Okay, right. so saying to people, if they won't close when lightly squeezed, then you shouldn't yeah, use them. Exactly. Is that right? I mean, there's a couple of things you've got to look for. We've got to look in weight. Okay. okay. I mean, if they're very light, then obviously they're going to be very weak. Okay. Sure. Also, if uh, they won't close when you when you tap them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't use them. Okay. But go to your fishmongers. Don't try and use the ones on the beach. I mean, they're not pasteurized, and you know, and they're over. You know, with the tide. Yeah, that's right. Okay, they're you know exposed to daylight and stuff. So again, from from uh, yeah, a reputable. Yeah, rules yeah. is good. Yeah, in Gareth town. has been yeah Gareth supplying good. loads of years, isn't he? Unbelievable. Okay, so they're the ones I'm going to be using okay. for today. I mean, I've got enough portion there. I'm not going to use all those, but I just wanted you to show, you know, that's the sort of bags that you'd get, that size bag. I'm going to use half of those for one portion. So I think that okay. would take it substantially so for you and your Okay, because we, we say about 200 grams. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, that's so fine. I'm going to use those. I'm going to use some... Uh, the, the ingredients that I use is nothing alien. Okay. Right. To, to the the average Joe Blocks. And the only reason why I do that is because yeah. I don't want to blind people with science. Okay. I'm going to just use typical, lovely ingredients which you can just marry together. I'm yeah. you know, do you know what I mean, Andy? I know, I'm it's, it's got to be simple. Yeah, it? well, not exactly. simple, but Okay, so what we've got, we've just got some, some shallots. Right. I'm going to show you how to prepare the shallots in a yeah. second. Just some flat leaf parsley. I think it's it's better than curly parsley. It's just got okay. more of a fragrant yeah, no, flavor to it. And it's, it's got a little citrus. Yeah. Uh, uh, taste to it as well. Just some prepped garlic that the boys have done for me. Right. Because it's a nightmare to try and peel in front yes. of everyone. And uh, just some lemon. I'm just going to, I've never had lemon to, I, to be honest with you, Andy, when I cook mm -hmm. with fish, I never add lemon to the actual uh, mussels themselves. I think it just toughens them up. I just okay. let the customer add that. Decide what they yeah. want. Much yeah. the best. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody's palate is different, isn't yeah. it? You've got it, but it's always a question of tasting, isn't it? That's and seeing right. what, what right. you think you need to make it the best yeah meal. and then i'm just going to use some uh just some chardonnay wine or a little bit of wine yeah and just some veg basic vegetable oil no okay. endorsements with celtic fishing game yeah they've been brilliant to me this summer they've been good all right yeah they've been really good brilliant so as you can see yeah brilliant <laughs> right so <laughs> so <laughs> what we're gonna do we've got listen this is induction okay normally i just use it gas i know okay? we so all brought up on it weren't we <laughs> yeah so this you know i haven't used one of these since last the last when festival. you did the cooking last year. Right, we so we're going to try and uh, see what we can do. I'm not going to turn that on now because that that's really quick. Quick in heat. heat, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to prep some, some shallots. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, to cut the shallot, cut it lengthways. So it's got the skin on, obviously. So keep the uh, root away from you. Yeah. Andy, all yeah. right. So when you cut, the, cut through the shallot, you cut lengthways. Right. Through the shallot. Okay, yep. like so. Take the, top, the tip off. Take the tip off. You got the bin for me. Okay, and then all we're going to do is just peel the shallots yep. nicely away and leave it with the root on. The reason why you leave the root on here, yeah, because this is where all when it makes you cry. 
this part here is going to make you quite And it safe. also makes it easier when you oh my chop God, it. Gonna, exactly. It doesn't all fall exactly. apart. That's but right. that's a good tip for people when they're doing yeah. onions, isn't it? To yeah. keep the root on. Keep the root on. Okay, I'm going to use two. Yeah. Okay. This Same again. So, so if you didn't see it the first time, here's the second time. So the root away. Cut the shallot lengthways. Yep. And of course, we're going to be putting this uh, menu, we're going to be putting all of this vi video that we're recording, yeah. and that's going to go onto our website as well. So they're going to see you in perpetuity, yeah. oh God. showing as them how to cook yeah, a more I mean marinade. You, yeah, I mean, the thing about this, Andy, right, you could simply, if you were doing a dinner party, you could yeah. get the onions cooked off nice and easy, quick, yeah. you know, uh, early, so you could have a little pot of cooked off onions okay in butter mm -hmm. and uh, and uh oil yep. add the garlic to it so you've got a little so if you were doing the mussels you know say at a dinner party you'd have more ready like a little confit which is yeah. slow cooked into the pan in go your mussels and you know it would save you a lot of time so you can spend some more time with, with uh your, your, your the party of so course. I mean, brilliant outside if you were doing a party outside as well mm. on the barbecue you could do this on the barbecue it's just prep, brilliant yeah it? it's all about preparation we or always mise en place as they yeah, say yeah or you know prepare yeah fail to prepare prepare to fail okay you know what i mean that's what we always uh, say and what about if you were to add any other ingredients could you add sort of chili or ginger oh, and make know, it yeah absolutely i mean we're just going for a classic a classic could, yeah you know you could add uh curry right red peppers you know, or oh, fennel. I love fennel and tarragon. And in the, the dish, which we're going to do later, yep. you know, we're going to show some, you know, real classic, you know, Mediterranean-style flavours in. You know, well, that's what okay. we're going to do. Okay. But, I mean, this, it, it's a you know, classic French dish. But I'm going to, you know, the difference is I'm going to add a little bit of cream to mine, okay, where, right. where a classic dish doesn't. Okay. Right, okay. I nice. mean, just right, basically because, uh, you know, as a preference, you know, I like using, using the cream. Of that, so that's the reason why. Okay, but you don't so look... You look good on not using a lot of cream, by the way. I know. I, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. the last, uh, to be honest with you, the last six weeks has been pretty hard. Oh, uh, so. you've been busy, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so so we've got the two shallots, okay, and we're going to show you how to cut the shallots. So keep the roots away from you, okay? Nice, sharp knife. Believe yeah. it or not, the sharper the knife, the better, yeah. okay? Because you don't want a blunt knife. No, 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 no. That's where okay. most of the accidents are with Ex a blunt knife, exactly. aren't they? Because it exactly. slips and... Yeah. And, you know, believe me, I've cut myself m many a time. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to come through the shallot. But as we come through the shallot, you can see we've kept it on the root. You see that? So, so we cut through it. I'll show you again. So, we're, yeah, basically fanning it. Okay. Okay. So do it again. All this bit here, I'm just going to, it's a bit woody. Yep. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of discard that at the end. Okay. So, show you again. As I cut my hand. Okay. So come through. And you can do this with an, an, an onion, the same. Oh, yes. You Absolutely. see it all the time, don't you? Yeah. Know, on the yeah. chefs. Yeah, nice. And what we do, what we do in the kitchen, Andy, yeah. we, we just have it all ready. Yeah. Like I said earlier. I mean, yeah. as I was saying earlier, you know, get yourself all ready, you know, prepped up. We it's all prepped. Yeah. yeah. So then we come through, Andy, and then we just come straight down. Okay. You know, and you can see how sharp your knife is because it's taking no effort whatsoever no. to go through that onion and it's just easy. Well, the, yeah, There's no shallot. pressure. You're not putting no, any pressure on that at all. at all. So, like I said, so we've come yeah. through mm -hmm. the shallot that way. Now we're going to go through yep. the shallot this way just once. And of course, we all should be cutting away from us, but in, the, in lots yeah. of instances when you're cutting veg, you do have to cut close to you, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. mean... And you can see the size of the onion as uh, the shallot as he's chopping yeah, it up. And, just and, and small. hey, if you if you feel like you don't think you can do this, okay, you can buy the shallots already chopped up. Can you? You can buy them. Yeah, okay. you can buy shallots in, in the supermarkets because everyone, all these guys who are going to be doing this in the long run, if they want to repeat it, they'll be going to the supermarket to buy yeah, it. And course. you can buy shallots and things like that. But for the purposes of what we're doing, yeah. we're using all the freshest veg we can. We're trying to use Absolutely. all the local Cornish ingredients because that's what you <laughs> pride yourself on here. Absolutely. You get but everything make, yeah. from about 20 miles away, is that I right? I would say that, yeah. Well, yeah. And the, the fish that I use, 95% of the, well, 90%, let's, yeah. let's be fair, comes straight out of the, uh, the harbour here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. My, my menu is written by what the guys bring in. Fantastic. Sometimes I ha it, the, the menu doesn't change for a day or so because obviously yeah. the tides... And the, the boys will bring in the fish later on and the lobsters, etc. Yeah. But I mean, I'd say, yeah, 90% that comes to that. Of I it. mean, I have prawns on my menu. I make paella. So you had it the other night. Yeah. So, you know, I can't get prawns from here. So I, I try and use uh, uh, crayfish and um, things yeah. like that. So, yeah. you know, instead, but yeah. 
So but that's what you pride yourself. Yeah, and absolutely. I think most of the restaurants around are trying to do that as much as possible. I, I'm in a, I'm in a, a, a great advantage that it is literally on my door. I mean, the, the restaurant is full, and you can imagine the restaurant yeah. is full, and uh, the fishermen will come in with buckets, and you know, it's exciting because it literally is, you know, plate to plate. Yeah. You know, and the boys are, and it's hard work for the boys. And boat to plate as well. Boats to plate exactly, but yeah. and it's really good for for the um for. You know, local economy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and for the, the customers to see this is how, yeah, how fresh it is. I yeah, mean, yeah. so, you know, that's what we pride ourselves on. So, okay, so if you can see. I'm, shut, I'm, I'm talking too much. Ah, Am don't I? Don't worry about it. Am we all right? Well, it, what else could you have here on a Sunday morning? I'm not joking, Andy. It's fantastic, I am burning. Isn't it? I it am is bur hot. I'm sat here and I'm burning. I should have put sun cream on beforehand. We would have done this live um, had it been not for the fact that all the new li restrictions have come into place. I know they're starting tomorrow, but we just felt it was only no, right that sense. we should do this today. Um, and hence the reason we were going to be live, but now we're That's doing it, filming. Yeah. So I think it works, and we like doing this anyway. And it's lovely and sunny. You can imagine here at 7 o'clock tonight, we could oh. have been blown away. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. so, th okay, oh, so if you have a look, all the, all the onions or the shallots rather, yep. will all cut the same same size. There's a reason okay. why I've cut them all the same size, is so they'll cook okay. all at the same time, yeah? So Good answer. When, they're the, when they're in the pan, you don't want a big old piece of mm -hmm. onion, which is gonna be raw, nope. and have it all shallot, which is gonna be raw, and everything else is gonna be overcooked. So you keep it all the same size, okay? okay. I mean, it's an art to do it, but I mean, it practice <sighs> makes perfect. Uh, well, they all say about a chef, isn't it? It's your knife skills are one of the most important yeah. things that you look for when you're yeah. taking on new chefs. Can they cook, cut something up That's to right. the level that you want? I get, do you know what I do, Andy? I, I get them to make batter. That's the first thing yeah, I yeah, do, because yeah. it's just two ingredients. If they can just get that right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can tell you stories so about that one. In that <laughs> I do, We've done fish festivals where I've asked chefs, what can we do with all this? And they haven't got a clue how to make a batter. <sighs> Anyway, chef. so, anyway, won't so go into okay, one. so we've got to prep garlic. Okay, so okay. We'll get all your stuff ready. So there yep. you go. So I'm gonna the way I if you the way I've cut the shallot, I'm gonna cut the the garlic, the, the garlic exactly the same way. Okay, okay so the roots away. Could so you use one of these presses, garlic presses? Would yeah. that be, or do you not? Are you yeah, a, a it's good. But what happens? Is, yeah, bruises. And what happens is, yeah. Okay, once it bruises, you know, it will go bitter very quickly. So okay. no, I, yeah, the garlic press is okay. But I mean, you know, for for satisfaction, for speed. yeah. And I'm going pretty slow actually here, Andy, to be honest with you. I, w I was watching, I just thought, you know, is this your normal speed or? No, it's <laughs> not. But I mean, but for, for, for purposes of yeah. what we're filming. So, okay, so if, look, I've just chopped it up nicely. I'm gonna add some salt. When you add a little bit of salt to the garlic, it has two things what it does. Yeah. It extracts oils. Okay, okay, if you put salt on your on your tongue, Andy, what happens? It goes dry. No, it doesn't. It, it, goes, it, it brings, it brings moisture out. Okay, so if you if you salted the cucumber, if you salted anything, it extracts the water, the the yeah. uh, liquid. So that's okay. what I've done. So I've added a little bit of salt, and then I'm going to do I'm going to use it, okay, just to make a paste. So the so you're using the back of the knife, ladies yep. and gentlemen. Don't use the front of the yep, knife because you might exactly cut that. yourself. So, so just be go. careful when you're doing this. Okay, so all I'm going to make is it's just a, a little rub. Yep. with with the salt. It takes a bit to get to know how to do that, doesn't yeah. it? It does, but you know what, again, it works. Fresh garlic paste is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So that there's your two ingredients. But you could use one of the, the yeah. squeezers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good stuff. Right, okay. yeah, a squeezer, if you don't want to do that. Use you, a squeezer. I'll, yeah, but if yeah. you don't have one, that's good. Okay. All right, so we're gonna turn this on. And like all good induction ho hoods, you, you can never see what's happening. You've got to no. put your hand in there. And you thought, oh, crikey, that was that's quick. All right. It's all right. Yeah. Okay, Is that that's, going? That's warm already. Okay, so a little bit of oil. Yep. Okay. Don't go crazy. You don't want it all greasy. Yep. So just put it like half a teaspoon. Okay, and get that, that going. Just ordinary vegetable oil. Yeah. So we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're going to melt the butter. Once the, the butter yep. and the oil come together, almost like a foam, I'm going to start adding the, the shallots. Okay. Yep. The shallots won't, won't take long to cook. Yep. Okay, so, and then once that starts to cook down, I'm going to add the garlic. Okay. okay. It is a very quick meal. I mean, we're it's a very quick padding meal. it out because we're talking, aren't we, um, basically? Um, yeah. I'll Five minutes, you'd have got all that done. Yeah. Okay, so. Get that dip through. The thing about these inductions, if you take it off, it stops. I know. You you, you've got to be, okay. they're great, fantastic. But they do yeah. have some. Okay, so if you have a look, it's coming together now. Okay. Okay. It's salted butter. 
Okay. Yep. So I'm just going to slowly... And of course, Cornish salted butter? It, it is, and it's Cornish sea salt as well. Okay. Okay. So whose butter are you, you use? Trewithin. Trewithin. I'm using Trewithin. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've taken the market. They're the probably the nicest yeah. butter around, isn't it? Yeah. And their products. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great product. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing now, so I'm slow cooking the, uh, the shallots, okay? And once they, they'll, they start to go opaque, it won't yeah. take long, okay? And what I mean by op opaque, clear, and the, so you know that they're starting to cook properly. Okay. I'm going to start adding the garlic. I won't add the garlic and the other uh, shallots at the same time because uh, I am i don't want the garlic to burn. Right. Okay. So as it comes to a little bit more butter. I mean, a lot of people just put their onion and uh, garlic in together, don't they? And, and yeah. they think that's the oh, right yeah. thing. But like you say, garlic doesn't take a long, especially if you've finely chopped it like you have. It's yeah. only going to take, take the half the time the uh, yeah. onions are going to. Okay. So if you have a look, that's bad for me. Okay. So... So if you if you see so the garlic, yep, and the white and the I've taken off, and if you have a look, it's taken all the fat, okay. So if you remember when we first started, we've taken what's happened is uh, the, the the shots have taken all the fat. And what happened is if I keep cooking it, it will release it again, but I don't want that. Okay. So it's got to the point where you see that come together. Yep. Okay. I'm going to add the mussels, one portion. Yep. Okay. And is this a really, this is on the menu here at All day, Harbour every day. Fish and Grill? All day, every day. Every day? Yeah. And okay. you can have this as a main course or as yeah. a starter, I whichever have, I, you prefer. Yeah. Okay, so you can see, if you, you can, yesterday I bought these pants from, for the, for, for, for the purpose of today, I bought these pants from Sain, uh, Sainsbury's yesterday. So, yeah. and the reason why I did that is so that if you wanted to get a new pan, you don't have to go to, uh, you know, one of these big industrial places. If I'm using them from Sainsbury's, okay, not that I'm trying to endorse Sainsbury's either, but if I can use them, so can you, you know? And that's the whole idea, is that just keeping it, it absolutely real to, uh, you know, to the household. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so no, I will ease use them, so why can't I? Yeah, I mean, so the less equipment is more, is it, if for well you, because yeah, I mean you don't want too many pieces of kit that you've got to wash up all the time. That's, that's it. one of the things. Now, have you noticed, right? still making a sound right once it starts not making that sound it's gone from frying to boiling yep okay because once the mussels start to open they're full mm -hmm. of salt water okay that's a natural salt mm -hmm. okay so th i don't normally generally season heavily my mussels okay so as i toss i turn it off which is great it's not what i want to do okay so as you okay. can see, they're just starting to open, okay? Yep. Okay, there we I go. I have a confession to make. I cooked this last night. You bugger. I did. Was it good? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, and I did the pip the next meal. And how did you get on there? Of course, I made it. Is it it is was good. <laughs> sure. did, it, did you and the wife eat it? Of course, yes. <laughs> and I was here to tell the tale as well. Okay, okay. So That, that ladies and gentlemen, is just the uh, lifeguards on the beach, just giving us a bit of background noise. Okay. Sorry. You're no, 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 absolutely. So you can still hear it. Can you still hear that noise? <laughs> that noise is still it frying. Okay, the shells are frying. And so there's some heat penetrating the muscles. And they're opening the muscles naturally. Okay, I'm not going to, you know, and all I'm doing is agitating the pan just to make sure that they're you know, helping the muscles to open. All right? So yep. Okay, as they're starting to open, they'll release a little bit of uh, liquid, like I said earlier. I'm just going to add a little bit of wine, yeah? Not a lot. Don't yep. swamp it. Nope. Don't you know? Don't drown. We've said 100 centiliters. Is yeah. Is that about right? Mm, yeah. I mean, like, we're only doing for one. I yeah. mean, okay. so, see, have you noticed it's still frying? I've added the wine. Yeah. Okay. But it has, you can still hear that they're still frying because what's happened is the wine is reducing. Okay. But the, the shells, are they starting to open up? Yeah, is they that, are. And, and does that mean that they're... They're starting to cook. Okay. okay. So, which is great. I, am, I never put a lid. On muscles. Some yeah. people. No, yeah, because the reason there's a. You're you know, steaming them then. Yeah, but what happens when you steam? What happens when you steam things? Okay, it produces liquid. Mm. Okay, once it starts to produce liquid, your your sauce is going to be just really watery. Yeah. Okay. So just let's try instead of doing that, let's try and open the muscles naturally and just reduce the uh, the muscles in their own liquor, almost like a fricassee. Yeah. All right. Okay. So very last moment, I'm going to add the. Okay. 
Uh, so can you see this starting to open? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so excuse me. What am I going to do? Okay, so parsley. I'm just going to add a little bit of parsley because we've added the garlic. Okay. Yep. Your other half doesn't want you to, yeah, your breath to smell first thing in the morning. So, so we put a bit of parsley. And do you find that that just takes away the taste of the garlic then? Yeah, no, well. Not taste, it takes the taste away. It just away, enhances but the, it. it yeah, okay. I think it just enhances it. Okay, okay, so if you have a look, so nice chopped par I've left the stalks on as well. I like the stalks, you know, okay. so I haven't picked it. No, no, I've no. Just, honestly, I've just Personal preference, used the whole it? thing. Yeah. yeah, so if you have a look. So what we're going to do, now we're going to turn up. Okay, and we're yep. going to finish this dish off, okay? Turn up as high as possible. So if we're serving this in the restaurant, how long would it take from, you know, you've got all the ingredients pre-pepped. How long? Three Five? minutes. Three minutes. Is that Three all? minutes, even if that. So ideal for a dinner party, really, isn't Perfect. it, from that point of view? Because you yeah. could have it all prepped, yeah. ready to yeah. go. Uh, yeah. Go Absolutely. out, glass yeah. of wine, cook the mu mussels off, yeah. take them back in, and serve everybody. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add the cream. I've got the parsley and I'm going to add the cream. Okay. Ah, and double cream we've got. Oh, for sure. Got to be double. Okay. And this is where Trewithin come in again to there. Let me just get this as high as possible. Yep. Uh, and the reason we're not putting the cream in earlier. What, what uh, yeah, I don't want to reduce too much. Uh, then okay. I'll just have to keep adding cream. Cre yeah. And, you know, it's just a last finish. It's just a finish. So they coat the mussels. You want the, you'll know when it's done properly is when the muscles are slightly coated. Can you see here yep. how, the, how they're coating? Okay. Okay, I didn't add too much to start with. I might add a bit more in a second. And we've got a... a, a uh, what have we got next? Oh, we, oh, we, we have... Okay, well, and the next dish or... No, 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 no. Oh, just okay, okay. So what we're going to do, I'm not going to season it, but I'm going to taste, taste it. Taste it, yep. Because okay. you've got the salt coming out of the muscles. You've got... Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Andy, honestly. Okay, let's have a... Does anyone else want to try these? You're more than welcome to try. Okay, they're nearly th they're nearly there. I'm gonna add a little bit more cream. Are we all right with Andy? They're good. They're good. They're good, mate. Aren't they? A bit more cream, yes. But okay, and then all I'm gonna do is just And what would we serve this with? A nice oh, just some, some good good French bread or some yep. more or some uh some fries. Oh, yeah, more frites. It's it's the classic in the south of France. Yeah, yeah. Some um, just a big old. I mean, in France, yeah, they they actually have plastic trays made, really, honestly, for for to put. I mean, I know it's like like the old school. So you'd you'd have your your glass of wine. Yeah. Well, that's where you put your fries. There's your wine. Your your Sauvignon Blanc, and there's your mussels, and there's your bread, and it's an actual tray. Fantastic. Fa it is. Fantastic. I think that's a way forward. <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Especially when you've got a day like this, yeah. where else would you be? I mean, you could almost have it for breakfast, couldn't you? Oh it's yeah. got all the ingredients. Moulin chips for breakfast. How's oh that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Done? I think we are. Once they're all open. If they're not open, don't eat them. Okay. Okay. Guys? So if you have a look. Look at this. Look at this. Excuse me. Look at the size of this bad boy. Look at that. Look at that. Honestly. Beautiful. So not overcooked. And I know all the uh, Absolutely mussels beautiful. that we've Still supplied okay. uh, for the fish boxes That's that it. we've done. They all came from local suppliers. So yeah. mussels in Cornwall, they're grown, they're everywhere. That. So please beautiful. just use local mussels. Don't go into the supermarkets and buy the frozen ones. No, buy fresh. No, gosh, no. You know, that's the most important thing. Buy fresh wherever you can. Okay, so okay, and then we're it. ready to plate. So we've got a plate over here. Yep. All we're just going to do is just throw them in. And then your choice, either a lovely crusty French bread oh, or yeah. chips or whatever. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's put it on the table. Oh, well, yeah. We're going to get a nice, what could be better? There we go. You speak it. So. Okay, so what we have, we have uh, Moore's Marinier, the uh, Harbour Fish and Grill restaurant way. Exactly. Okay, and served with, for me, it'll be fine. Shallots, shown how to chop the shallots up. Yeah. We then, very finely, garlic, very finely chopped, That's and right. then we just smoothed it out, didn't we? Yep. Just cut and those off. Slow cook them in it? butter and oil. Yeah. Okay, uh, until they're opaque, so they're clear, clear in, in colour. Okay, uh, and then I, I added the mussels. And then after adding the mussels, we added, uh, once it started to open, I added a little bit of white wine, didn't go over the top. Okay, cooked the white wine through, uh, added the parsley, added the cream, and just reduced. And all we did is just agitate the mussels until they started, and just kept prodding them until they started to open, and hey presto, 
I said, just what a reduced dish. it, and there you go. It's now a, we would be asking symbol. everybody to do this, wouldn't we? And I we think would. we can we do would. that. The crew yeah. could always do that yeah. and do. No, and what, what, well done, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> what we would normally do now, we put on the side. side. You guys would eat out Yeah, yourself. exactly. <laughs> I think we could do that. <laughs> He's done well, hasn't he, ladies and gentlemen? Now, while we're just <laughs> cleaning down and yeah, making sure like we get the next recipes, and obviously the seagulls are above us, around somewhere. We're just going to tidy up, but in the meantime, we've got some fantastic music for you to guys to listen to. So um, enjoy those who cooked it. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to Lane Community Theatre, the home of New Key Dramatic Society, and our participation in the virtual fish festival of 2020. It is hoped that New Key Dramatic Society will be able to welcome you all in person to the many events we have planned for 2021. So please keep a lookout. One of our reader writers, Anne Masters, came up with the idea of writing letters based on a theme of the fishing industry in and around Newquay at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, and has written three of our five letters. The last letter, read by Judith Fox, is based on a true incident which took place on the night of the 21st to 22nd of October, 1904. It is known as the Dogger Bank Incident, and more information can be found on Wikipedia. On behalf of Lane, I would like to thank all the readers and writers for getting involved, and to all the backstage crew who have helped put this together. And I would like to offer a particularly warm welcome to Perry Hughes and his team from the Fish Festival organisers. We hope you enjoy our efforts. Thank you. Our first letter. A mother is writing to her son young adult working and lodging in Newquay. Written and read by Anne Masters. Dear Jack, at last I found time to sit and write to you. I don't know where the time to go to. Always seem to be somebody wanting something doing somewhere. Poor old Mrs. Pierce fell over and shook herself up brave. I've been in and helped out where I can and her daughter comes up from the village and stays overnight. Her youngest maid is supposed to be coming to visit and do her bit. Tis eight years ago she left her Exeter when she married that clever chap, accountant I believe he is. Now then, I've heard tell that there's somebody wanting to put some grand hotel up on the headland in Newquay. I can tell you there'll be ructions over that. You mark my words, the fishermen went like it one bit. Now then, Jack, as far as I know, you've always been a good boy, with a sensible head on your shoulders. But I wouldn't be happy in my own mind if I didn't remind you not to get yourself tied up with any troublemakers. On behalf of your father and myself, I'm sending our love and the best of wishes to you, son. Keep well, mother. Oh, and please give our regards to Mrs Brown. Now I'd like to pass you over to one of our stalwarts of Newquay Fish Festival, and that's Gareth Horner from Rawls Fish and Fish Shop. Um, he's been operating here with his family for the last hundred years, so he's going to be able to show us what it's like and how to dress a crab. So today I'm going to explain to you how to deal with a crab. Now you may buy this crab from a local fisherman, you may hopefully even buy it from your local fishmonger. When you get a whole crab and you've got it home, you'll need to cook it. Now the ones that we have this evening, this is a fine specimen of a female crab, and this is a male crab. The female crabs at this time of year are at their best. They have the, the roe or the coral in them, which is the eggs, and it makes the brown meat extra tasty. And it's a brilliant time of year for those. But if you don't like the brown meat in a crab, perhaps the male's the one to go for. He's the guy with the big claws. And there's going to be more white meat in that one than there is in the female. When you get your crabs home, drop them in boiling water, cook them for 20 minutes, take them out, let them cool down. And then this is what we're going to do with them. So we're going to start by forcing 
the body away from the back. And we're going to put our thumbs on the back and push up like that. That will then enable us to get inside the back. And this is what we see. Now these are the gills around the outside of the body. Some have fallen down into the body cavity. The gills are very often known as the dead men's fingers. They're like little wet, soggy feathers. And they're quite a bitter taste and we really don't want to eat those. So we're going to toss those aside. We're going to pull the ones away from the body. These are his jaws and we're going to get rid of those. And the gills on the other side. And that just leaves two things to do. That flap comes off and attached to the end of that flap in here is a vein. Just like the vein inside a prawn tail. And in amongst this coral, you can see it. So that piece there, that has to come out. That's the intestines, so we don't need that. And this little bit of white waxy meat, that's not very, not very pleasant, so we're going to dispose of that as well. That just leaves the stomach sac, which is behind the head. So we're going to press down until it clicks. And we're going to pull that sac out, and that goes as well. That leaves a little bit of coral and some brown meat, which we're going to pop in the back. Inside the shell, in the corners of the shell, is the brown meat, the paste. That's quite a strong tasting crab. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's excellent for putting in a crab sandwich. Mix it up, a little bit of white and a little bit of brown, and it'll give you that added flavour. We're just going, for now, to Remove that, and that membrane comes away with it. And we do the other side. And we take out anything that doesn't look like it belongs. That's the brown paste. There's a little bit more in there, but only a tiny smidge. We'll get to that in a moment. We're just going to put that aside for now. while we deal with the claws, which will come off by twisting inwards. And you can see the white meat on that part there. The legs. This just leaves the knuckle, this is the piece where the legs join together, and in here, this is chocolate block with white meat, but it takes a bit of separating. It's in little separate compartments which are divided by shell. So in order to get into that, we're going to cut down through there with a knife to separate that. With the end of a spoon, we're going to Open up the legs and take those little pieces out. And there's plenty of meat in there. We can pull that out with the end of a teaspoon. Or just pull it off like that with your fingers. And that's all worth saving. Now all these crabs have come in through Newquay Harbour, they're caught by local fishermen. And we've been doing this as a company since 1936, when my grandfather and his brother-in-law moved from their independent businesses to come into partnership in East Street, where I'm working now. We're now going to cut those down the middle, and inside this is chock-a-block with meat. That will now scrape into the back. 
like this. There's lots of lovely white meat in there. That's gorgeous. We do the same with the other one. Cut that down the middle. And again, scrape the meat into the back. If you're not confident about pieces of shell, if you scrape it into a stainless steel bowl, you'll actually hear the hear the the shell hit the pan, and then you can take it out again. We're now going to deal with the claws and the legs. Very similar. We can draw that meat off the. And we're now going to break this into sections. There are three sections. In order to get that one out, we're just going to give that a little tap, like that. And using the end of a teaspoon again, we just lever the meat out of the shell and into the back. That's completely empty now. And the same with this piece. We lever the meat out. This is all lovely white meat. This claw meat is generally considered to be the best part of it. Which leaves the actual pincher. So we're going to pop that there. Give it a little tap. And that separates nicely. There's a tendon that runs down through the middle of here, so we need to scrape the meat away. Spot the deliberate mistake. And that leaves us with that piece of t A little bit of meat in there, that scrapes out. And the legs we deal with in the same manner. We can dispense with that because there's nothing on that. And again, the three sections. The middle section, we just scrape out. But we have to crack these. So a gentle tap rather than a smash. And again, that's chock-a-block with lovely white meat. So the final piece of the leg, we take it apart like that. Quite gently, this comes out in one lump. There's nothing in the middle of there to do any harm. There's no cartilage. That is solid meat. So we pop that in the middle. And that is how you extract the meat from a crab. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the trouble to look at this video. Thank you for wishing to attend Newquay Fish Festival. And I hope that next year we'll be able to see you all in person down at Newquay Harbour and enjoy each other's company. Thank you very much. Big thank you to you, Gareth. You've always been a stalwart of Newquay Fish Festival. Every year you can come along and give us a demonstration. And this year you've excelled yourself with a wonderful demonstration of how to prepare a crab. Rawls, you've been there forever. Um, and we just say thank you on behalf of Newquay community for all the different things that you do. Not only as your role as the fish, major fishmonger in Newquay, but also for your role as the guy who sends out the RNLI lifeboat on all those shouts that are needed when somebody's in uh, danger and needs you, your attention. I'd now like to pass you over uh, to another stalwart of Newquay Fish Festival, which is Olenguela. Olenguela are part of Newquay Choir, male voice choir, and those guys sing for their suppers every year for us down at Newquay Fish Festival. And this year, we've got them up at the Hewis Hut, one of the iconic 
places in Newquay that you can see on all our publicity. So over to you guys from the Olenguela Choir. Good evening, uh, this is uh, Olenguela, stood up here at the Hewer's Hut in Newquay, looking forward to entertaining you guys uh, this evening with uh, some songs uh, about the sea, about Cornwall, and we're going to kick off uh, with a little piece that's called Men of Cornwall. Men of Cornwall, one and all are we, and here we stand together. To bring you greetings from our Celtic land We have brought our wives and friends with us Across the western water To sing, to drink, to talk and shake your hand In times ago the Celtic saints came to our land of Cornwall And put their names to our villages and towns Like St. Just, St. I, St. Barry and St. Hilary and Zeno our Celtic Christian roots can here be found. Men of Cornwall, one and all are we, and here we stand together to bring you greetings from our Celtic land. We have brought our wives and friends with us across the western water to sing, to drink, to talk and shake your hands. We all share a common feeling a deep-rooted love of Cornwall. We are here with you to sing our songs with pride. We will tell you of the fishermen, the farmers and the miners, and the beauty of our Cornish countryside. Men of Cornwall, one and all are we, and here we stand together to bring you greetings from our Celtic land. We have brought our wives and friends with us across the western water to sing, to drink, to talk and shake your hand. Men of Cornwall, one and all are we, and here we stand together to bring you greetings from our Celtic land. We have brought our wives and friends with us across the western water to sing, to drink, to talk and shake your hand. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, with your pigtail sailor hanging down behind. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, oh Jenny, get your oat cakes done. And now we lads be of good cheer, for the Cornish coast will soon draw near. We'll set a course for you to steer. Oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, with your big tail sailor hanging down behind. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Now, wolf rock light is in our sight. We'll be in port tomorrow night. We'll set a course for Lundy Light. Oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, with your big tail sailor hanging down behind. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. And now we're rounding Town Head. No more salt before we believe red. We've a man on the chains for swinging lead. Oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, with your big tail sailor hanging down behind. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. And now we're rounding Lundy Rock. All hammers slashed and sea chests locked. We'll warp her into Bristol Dock. Oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, with your big tail sailor hanging down behind. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. And now we're sheltered from the gale. We'll be off to the White House for strong ale. We'll drink and drink till memories fail. Oh, Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Whip jamboree, whip jamboree, with your pigtail sailor hanging down behind. Whip jamboree, whip 
Jamboree, oh Jenny, get your oat cakes done. Men of Cornwall, heed the call to stand beneath St. Piran's flag. Drink of Betty Stocks and Doomba, eat your pasties from a bag. Beer of heaven, I've had seven, I can handle any more, any more, I can handle any more. Wander then the ways of Cornwall, rest a while upon Gosmore. Linger on the road to Truro, wonder what the bus lane's for. Wise deliverers, use the rivers, better for the heavy loads. Heavy loads, quicker that way than by roads. By the circle, the watchful lifeguards, Talent spotting to a man On the beach the dusky maidens Bearing all top up their tans Hill and hailing in Australian Health and safety by the sea By the sea Safe and healthy by the sea Sing of little lies and the border, the white rose and Camborne Hill. Dance the obios and flora, merrily your glasses fill. Sing Trelawney, sing Trelawney, shall Trelawney live or die? Live or die. Cornish lads will know the reason why. Sing Trelawney, sing Trelawney, shall Trelawney live or die, live or die. Cornish lads will know the reason why. So
Our second letter is from Mary. Mary and her husband have left their home village with their children and come to Newquay. Written by Anne Masters and read by Rachel Bailey. Hello sister. I do hope this letter finds you all well, but sadly I can't say the same about we. I'm worried out of my mind and Albert is so tasty these days. Tis all about that there headland and the building in that big hotel they wants to put on it. The men have always dried their nets there and rightly feel they have the rights to it. Anyhow, tis getting some heated now. Any number of them is going up there at night and scan it all down, even tossing it into the sea. I'm so afraid the constable's going to catch him at it and lock him up. Don't know how me and the children will cope without Albert. Oh, I suppose it'll turn out all right in the end. Don't we go tell mother and father, mind. I don't want they worried up about it. With love from Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. I hope you've really enjoyed that fantastic maul cooked here by our superb chef, Aaron. Um, but of course, I've got to remind you that this isn't just live, but you can also have it on a record so you can press play again and watch it again. Isn't that fantastic? So how many times? So, oh, so, so if, you, do 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 if you repeat it, you can actually watch it, repeat the dish. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Because yes, yes, yes. in, say, six weeks' time, say you want to do the dish again, or you just come back onto the, the website Perfect. and on YouTube or whatever. And you can and slow forward it and all those things yeah. as well. Yeah, that so makes sense. It's brilliant. brilliant, brilliant. So we're going now into the next dish. Okay, so the next dish, uh, I'm going to be using hake. Hake, okay. you, I'm, to be honest with you, hake has got so popular lately. It does, doesn't it? You know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, five years ago, it was all important. You and know, it, it is difficult to get sometimes because a lot of it goes yeah. to Spain, doesn't it? Because it's Portugal, our national yeah. Yeah, and Portugal because well, they the, love well, the dish. Over there. The dish I'm about to do today is kind of inspired by by Spain and, and Portugal. Oh, okay. They, you know, it's the sort of dish that they, I would find. Yeah. In uh, in Portugal, okay. But so of course, you could use pollock. You could use any sustainable white fish. Okay, Perfect. so whiting, cod. Uh, even stone bass. But it needs a bass. nice thick fillet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You want, personally, for a dish like this, a nice pe meaty piece of fish. Okay. I like monkfish you could use as well. It's yeah. good. But uh, for this dish, we're going to use, uh, like I said, we're going to use hake. The first thing that we're going to do, though, for this dish, uh, maybe introduce what the dish is. Well, we better, right. haven't we? Because we've got it uh, on the menu, which is on the actual website, the Newquay Fish Festival website, and you can find it there, is hake or pollock with chorizo, chickpeas, pipperade with tender stem broccoli. Sounds good. And it's got all those elements of the Mediterranean and Spain, yeah, I mean, like, like you said. I'm, I was inspired, you know, as you know, growing up cooking. I, used, I love aniseed, I love, you know, mm. mustards and all those sort of yeah. flavours, you know. Egg. Okay, so what we what have, we okay, so we have a nice piece of centre cut of, uh, of uh, hake. Yeah. I mean, it's the loin. So what I mean by that is, so you can imagine the fish, the, a fillet of fish, yeah. okay? So you want the center part. So you're going to take away the belly, okay? And you're going to take away the back, take away the neck, and you're going to take away the tail. So that rectangle bit in the center of the yeah. hake, a uh, portion of hake, you know, average, you could get something like that. And out of it, you'd get about eight to 10 portions. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what so we're going uh, for. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, yep. and is I'm going to, I'm going to season the the flesh okay. okay and should we wipe that down a little bit before to in case I'm, it's dried I'm, off you know, no i'm i'm gonna do it later okay okay so i'm gonna leave okay so all i'm gonna do is just gonna season it yep excuse me my social distancing so i'm just gonna leave that for five ten minutes okay okay you can add some herbs to that you know so maybe some finely chopped rosemary mm -hmm. you could even add a bit of tarragon mm -hmm. to your salt okay mm -hmm. you can even buy it like that now okay. with all sorts of herbs in yes you can great with a little bit of uh thyme in there all yeah. those uh those herbs you know maybe a little uh grated lemon but we're going to keep it simple for the for, okay. for the guys today yep. just to enhance the flavor of the fish but i'm just going to use a basic cornish sea salt but it, look, honestly, if you come and see, all of a sudden, you can see it already starting Start. to get wet. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. So what's happening is it's starting to, to draw the, uh, 
the liquid out of the, out of the fish can already. And what that does, it just firms up the fish just slightly. So when you cut into it, it's not too, it doesn't go too just, mushy oh, okay. and you don't overcook it. It's starting to cook already. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah, we're yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. do there. Okay, so what we're going to do, right. we're going to make those, strip the peppers first. Okay, yep. so this we're going to make a pip rod. A pip rod basically is, okay, with chorizo and chickpeas. Okay, so, the, so there's your carbs. Nice bit of meaty, so you've got some natural oils yeah. coming out of the meat. So, so we're not using a lot of vegetable, uh, vegetable oil or anything or butter, yep. even though I'm going to bang that in anyway. But uh, it's a pip rod is a slow cooked pepper, like you would a slow cooking onion. Okay, okay. so slow cooking, break down. We're, if I'm putting doing this dish in the um, in the restaurant, I would, you're right there. So I would um, make this. I'd, I'd slow cook them for at least three hours. Really? I would slow cook them for, for hours and hours and hours. In the oven, would you put that? No, I'd just, just slow, slow on, on the, the oven. On the oven. So it just breaks down, so they just come together. Okay. You know, so it's almost like a mashed potato. Yeah. You know, it really comes tight. Okay. That's how I would do it in yep. the restaurant. And then I would finish it off. Instead of using passata in the restaurant, I'd use a lobster bisque. But, you know, for the customer, I'm uh, just going to keep it nice and basic. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to prep the, the pepper first. Okay. Andy, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm. Okay, how many cheeks does a pepper have? I don't know. Okay, Aaron, how many cheeks does a it's red not a, pepper it's not, have? It's, it's not a. It's, it's not I a joke. It's, it's not, not a, a joke. joke. Okay, it has three cheeks. An okay. apple has three cheeks. Okay, a lemon has three yeah. cheeks. And what I mean by that is, when you cut the pepper, one, one. cheek, two cheeks, three cheeks. One, two, three. Okay. And you've got rid of most of the and you've interior. Got rid of exactly. So then what we do, we just take the centre out. Because it is important to get rid of all of that, isn't it? Because yeah. that's the, how can we say, yeah, it's the fibre, bitter. Yeah, it's fire, yes. Yeah, and it's what about taking the skin off? Would would you, mm, is that an option? I, yeah, I would, you know, if I, it, I, I don't mind it. it. As well as, you know, burning off the skins. And what happens is when you burn the skins off, the peppers take a different flavour yes, as well. Yes, sweeter, aren't And they? it is lovely and sweeter. Yeah. I mean, but for, for today, where we are Don't inside, no, we're not going to do it, okay? Okay, okay so, so what, what I've what done, okay, so now we have some cheeks there, okay? Yep. What I, okay, so we've got, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to finally uh, strip them down here. Excuse me, just get rid of the, the pips. So I'm going to finally cut them down, okay? Yep, so we're slicing as okay. finely as you would for an onion, basically. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So... Okay, so, and again, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that you can rewind this, see how Aaron, how Aaron has actually prepared the peppers at any time during the uh, performance. Yeah, I mean. So you can watch it for yourselves. If you are afraid of cutting things out, you can buy jars cooked already. Yeah, of You can get them in, the, you know, yeah. and then it's easier to just cook them down. Yep. Okay, I'm turning And like you say, this is a classic Mediterranean style of dish, isn't it? Yeah. French, Italian, yeah. uh, French, Spanish. Yeah. Portuguese. Exactly. So, nearly there, guys. Okay, so I'm not going to use them all. Okay. okay, people are afraid to use green peppers in cooking because they're kind of bitter. I quite like that bitterness. Yep. Andrew, you know I mean? I like it. I mean, so I'm just going to do a little bit more. These peppers were bigger than I, than I anticipated, so yep. we're not going to use any more than that. Okay? Yep. So, in a way, you could use three peppers, yeah, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm going to take that out of the way. Okay, Brilliant. so there we go. So, there's our peppers, okay? The boys, unfortunately, have used all my red onions this morning preparing, so I've stolen some from them. I haven't, you know, so they prepared me some red onions. So, if you have a look, so nice red it's onions about there. about half a red onion there? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to use because they've used all the rest of it. <laughs> Thanks, boys. So but that's that. what it's all about, isn't it, in a kitchen? Yeah. You've got to use the ingredients that you've got in front yeah, of you. Yes, yeah. you want the classic menu and you want all the classic ingredients but sometimes it ain't all there is no, it? No, so you've got to adapt. And you've that's got to what adapt. we're doing today. Yeah. Okay, but so we do try to be seasonal. Okay, Sorry. Now this is my favourite. This this Fennel. and celeriac is my favourite, favourite vegetables of Beautiful all time. Beautiful way I mean, of making it. I love it. it. Yeah. Okay. And all we're going to do is just going to slow cook it with everything else. Okay. And it just brings a, a beautiful anise flavour to yeah, it, it to the whole dish. Okay? It does. So I'm going to finally cut it. Again, root away. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to finally and it makes a wonderful coleslaw, doesn't it? You know what we make, honestly, with, with slow cooked ribs. Okay, slow cooked beef ribs, okay, short ribs, yeah. with a jalapeno yeah. and fennel slaw. Okay, it's absolutely Perfect. fantastic. Because it brings a little bit of mandarin yeah, yeah. through it. Just so good, so good. That is, you know, that is my sort of food. Yeah. I love that sort of thing. And you were talking about the menu, different recipes that you put on. Do you change your menu a lot, or is you know, it a, this a Yeah, I, I mean, this year, 
is a little bit different because obviously what's you know what everyone's been going through but uh i since we've been opening Ju in uh july i've changed my menu three times okay um normally i'd change it uh, on an average you know year season i change it every day yeah the menus change every day it keeps it nice and uh you know the, the boys brain cells in the kitchen are like what's going on what you know what you know so I change it every day. It's something new every day for the boys, you know, yep. something new for your customers. And, and also it just keeps everyone on their toes. Seasonality, isn't it? Because you're Absolutely. getting you know I mean? different things, as you've yeah. said earlier. You get all your produce within a probably about a 20 mile radius, and you've got yeah. guys coming in off the fishing boats, yeah. bringing in product that you yeah. can put and, and you and don't know what's coming and in. And the thing, the thing is that a lot of my fishermen have allotments as well. Of course. So they actually bring in uh, their veg. Yeah. Oh, can't do anything with these strawberries. What are we going to do? Oh, you know, so there yeah, we are yeah. in the middle of service, starting to make jam, <laughs> which is which is great, <laughs> which is absolutely, that's what you want. Or they'll be in the run of beans, or they'll be in tender stem. This tender stem broccoli was from, actually was from uh, one of the fishermen. Really? Uh, yeah, from Joe. So Fantastic. Brilliant. And ladies and gentlemen, just so you can see, I mean, I, I'm sure you can see the background that we've got. We've got the New Key Harbour today, Sunday morning. It's fantastic down here, guys. You've got everything going on. You've got boats in the bay. You've got people who've been doing exercises on the beach. You've got sandcastles being actually made. Lorries coming down. I can see Phil Trebilcox oh, just yeah. driving down now. And these are guys who are coming out to go fishing. Boats are back to go. It's one of the most idyllic places in the world to come to. It, it's it Newquay Harbour. I mean, I mean, fantastic. So there we are. So we got again, like we did with the mussels, yes. uh, when we were cooking the shallots. You got uh, oil. You've got uh, your butter. It's starting to foam. That's what okay. you want. So we're throwing the whole thing in. Okay. Oh, see, see, you got wasps out here. Okay. It is September after all. Okay, so. What we're doing, just throwing everything in. Remember the the butter's already uh, the butter's already salted. Yeah. But I'm going to add a little bit of butter, uh, salt to that. Okay. You promote that. Okay. So there you go. So that's the basic the basics to your um, your piperard. Okay. That's yep. going to take, like I said, ten minutes. Okay. Next stage. Okay. We're going to add. We're going to cook the chorizo off. Okay. Yep. So and then once we've cooked the chorizo off, we'll add all this by all this bits and pieces to the chorizo. Okay. Okay. And then uh, that's uh, going to just slow cook. Chorizo, obviously, there's two different types, aren't that's there? That's right. And I mean that, obviously, there's hundreds of different actual brands, but there's two different types. Yeah. There's a spicy one and yeah, there's... mild the, and, and the, mild, yeah. Which we can uh, use We either? are using just an authentic mild, okay? Okay. And it's 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 cooked already, okay? <laughs> yeah. So just just for the sake of the customer, really. So we're not, we're not going to... um. And you, you're saying cook, so you could eat it raw. You could eat it like that, but, you know, it's... Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's a bit insipid. Like like you want to get some colour on there. Yeah. I mean, what I would say to the boys when they're cooking with, with meat, <laughs> colour is flavour. That's really important, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what I mean by meat, I mean, like, when you're cooking in a pan with, with fish yep. or a sausage or a piece of bacon, you know, the more colour you have... And I'm not saying burnt. I mean, I mean... The more colour that you have on it, the better it is. Yep. Okay. Because again, okay, so do you see that it's coming through? Okay, right. Let's see if I can get this one on as well. I'm sure we'll be able to get that going. Okay, so we get a nice high heat on that one. It's so warm here today, isn't it? You know, it's just perfect. Yuki, September, and we should be here with the live fish festival. I know, I know. Andy, but you've you know, been supporting us so many times over the years, and uh, you mentioned about your tapas, and we'd yeah. love to have done that. We're going to do it, aren't well, we? Again? We will do it. We, we will. will, and we we'll let everybody it. know when yeah. we're going to. So watch this space, ladies and gentlemen, on the Nuki Fish Festival website for all the information that we're going to tell you about when we can exactly. do the tapas. Sorry, exactly. Okay, so listen, go. we're going to get on this tree. So we're going to start getting some color on this tree. So we don't go okay. overpower it. I think that'll be enough. So yeah, well, now that's starting to slow cook down. Do you remember if you if you watched the um the the, the muscle dish the we added yeah the muscle dish earlier we added the garlic later on yep so we're gonna add the now they're starting to slow cook down yep don't do that at home guys that's a hot pan it's just that you know your I'm fingers used are used yeah. to doing it so again root away from you and we're just gonna slightly cut through it okay and of course you heard Aaron say earlier that 
in a way that this may have been produced. Uh, you may have done this earlier so that you've got yeah, a I long done, yeah. sweating. We're yeah. going to be a bit quicker, aren't we, on that? Yeah, one? yeah. I yeah. can, you know, the, I could have done the, the blue piece of effect where I could have said, you know, here's I one did, I did earlier, yes. but I want to cook at the same time as you guys. We saw earlier we had some salt to that as well, so we're going to yep. start. Okay, if you saw me do it earlier. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we would love some photos of what you're doing at home in cooking at the same time as we. If you could send it to us on our Facebook, Yuki yeah. Fish Festival, we'd love it. We'll post them up on, on our site for you. Um, or YouTube, don't forget to be able to do that as well. We'd love any pictures that you've there you go. got and your comments about what we're doing today because it's the first time for us we've ever done this. Um, and we just like to a bit of feedback, please. Okay, so now the garlic's been added. Can you smell that, guys? Can you smell the garlic? Beautiful. Okay, now if you have a look at the chorizo, look. The, the chorizo is starting to release its oils. So that oil is going to, to be amalgamated with the peppers and garlic and everything from this oil. Because we're going to add this pan to that pan, okay? Okay. Okay, see the colour coming on there? Beautiful. Okay. So again, I suppose if you're doing this for a dinner party, a lot of it can be already prepared yeah, earlier. That, 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 I it's... mean, we do in the restaurant. That's exactly yeah. what we do in the restaurant. We we get ourselves organised. Okay. You know, and that's why we can, you know, we can, you know, produce the, the standard of standard of food that we do. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. as you can see now, these are starting to break down in here. So yeah. look, we want to break those down as much as possible. Okay. Okay. So see the colour on the on, see the colour on the uh, the tree so tree so is coming through releasing all the oils. We don't want to burn it. Like I said before. No, because otherwise it goes yeah. hard, doesn't yeah, it? Awful. You get chirit, so it's yeah. a nice so taste. What we're gonna do, so hard. now that's we're gonna add that one to this one. Okay. That's okay. one of the fishing boats just starting up, ladies and gentlemen. So if you wonder what that noise is in the background, yeah, okay, that isn't so, one of us. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna clean this pan out. Yep. So those cooking along with us, I hope you're um, able okay. to follow us quite. We're trying I'll, to yeah, be I'll, too I'll, fast. Yeah, should I, should I recap what we're doing? Yeah, okay? I think it's... So, we've stripped the peppers, the onions, and the fennel, okay? Nice, nicely fine, diced, uh, fine slice. And then we add them to butter and uh, oil, okay? Once they're slow cooked for about two or three minutes, slow cook them down, we, uh, we uh, shredded a little bit of garlic, we added the garlic, okay. In another pan, we had some chopped chorizo. We added the chopped chorizo and we started releasing the oil. We started getting a bit of color on those, okay. And then we added the two together, okay. So we got to the stage now where we can add the, the, the tomatoes and we can add the passata. And all we're going to do is just add a little bit of salt later on, okay. okay. I'm just going to use, honestly, guys, I'm just going to use a bit of crushed oxo, vegetable oxo juice, just as good. I mean, if you think about it, table salt is my mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so using And the crushed juice. oxo, there's a lot of salt That's in that yeah, as well, isn't there? There is a lot of salt, so you don't need a lot. No. Okay, so here we go. So add some. And we're saying about 100 grams. Yeah. But a couple of. We want to break those down okay. as well. And tomatoes, there's so much profusion of lovely tomatoes, Cornish tomatoes around at the moment, isn't there? You can get, right. and they're wonderful. I've got them in the garden. You've yeah. probably got them. You like yeah. I mean, growing your own as yeah, well. I know. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So as we start to uh, break all that down, I'm going to add a little bit of passata. Okay, tomato. So we've said about 100 yeah. milliliters. I mean, but I mean, you I'm can not going to add it all now. No, of course not. Okay, I'm going to, because we're going to, we're going to cook that right down now. Bit of water. While we're cooking that right down. I'm going to add a tiny bit of salt to start with. Yep. Okay. Give that. Uh, just stir it round. And okay, we're going to put, yeah. turn that right up to start with, or off in my case. Turn it right up. And from that, and then I'm, once it brings the boil, I'm going to bring. Uh, I'm going to turn it right down. I'm going to just I'm going to just slowly tick it over. Okay. Right. Okay. At this stage. We're going to start cooking the hake. Oh, okay. Are you all right? Yeah, sure. Because so, that takes, how long do you reckon? Oh, six minutes. Six minutes. So yeah, that's good timing, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to only cook this on one side. Okay. Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so hopefully, okay, with the... the but you're going to baste it a bit, I suspect. I will. Yes, I will, yeah. So That's the key, isn't it? So 
a little bit of oil in your pan, and a little just bit of butter. For people who do prefer or who are have got a, an aversion to cream and milk and those, could you grill this or oh, would? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you, of course you can. You just won't have the same effect. No, it won't have the flavoursome, no. but there are things out there that you can use. I wouldn't yeah. use coconut butter or any of those yes. things, but yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to pat that dry now. Right. Okay. Stays very wet. Yep. Because what's happened is you've had the uh, the salt has drawn the, yep. the moisture out of it. Okay. I'm just going to hold that in the pan. Right. For a few seconds so it doesn't curl. Okay. I don't like scoring my fish. No. no, no, no. I don't like squash. Do you not well, think I'm, that puts a bit more heat into the fish? Yeah, but I, but I'm going to cook this, so I'm going to slow cook it. Okay, okay. I'm so it will cook through anyway. If I score it, then more will happen is it'll cook too quickly. Yep. On the skin, I still be raw. I'm, I'm, I'm going to that. Honestly, Andy, that's going to be fine without you scoring okay. fish. Okay. So that was just temperature we on. Yep. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, I think that the butter isn't burning because if you've got to that high. It'll go black, won't it? The oh, butter and it burn, tastes, it and it will go. Well, watch yeah. me burn that now, Andy. Now you said that. Watch me burn it. Uh, you won't. <laughs> I, I, you won't do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, chef. Yeah, you, you don't want to overcook it because all burn. Chef. <laughs> right. But so the butter I, I, in front. There's, a, there's a reason why I keep moving it, okay? Because these inductions I do have hot spots, so I'm just trying to find. Don't try and do that at home. If you've got a gas, a hot, slow cook it, turn it down, yeah. and just let the fish cook lovely. And what what happens to heat, Andy? It rises. It rises. So that will, the heat will rise through the fish. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll cook the the skin. Rise all the way through. You want your fish medium rare. You know. Of course. So it you still know, cooks when you put it on the plate, oh, doesn't absolutely. it? We'll we'll cook it one side, and then what we'll do, we'll turn over the pan and we'll kiss it in the in the. The butter on the other side while I baste it. I like that, kissing right. it. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. good way of describing that. Yeah, we're going to kiss the other side. Kiss right? the other side. Yeah. I wonder what you were going to say for a moment then. <laughs> so, look. How's that? See how good? that's coming down. Okay. Okay. Taste. It's looking good. It's looking good. So, I'm we've gonna... got everything gone in there now. Okay. So, yeah, we'll have the chickpeas in a second. Yep. We'll have the tarragon in a second as well. And then we'll add a little bit of the uh, sambuca. We know the sambuca now. It will cook through. Sambuca or perno? Oh, perno. Yeah, all perno. On the menu it says perno. perno. You know, the boys have drank all the perno. And we, so in the in their food, you know, they've oh, put of in the food. Of course, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. honestly so, believe. What about the saffron, Chef? That's going in now as well. Okay. Good man. So saffron is a Cornish actual herb, isn't it? Because that's a lot of people have grown yeah. it over the years, and it's uh, a Jamaica in. Something to do with Jamaica and Jamaica. Yeah, it's just one of those crocuses. That's yeah. the, the stem of the, 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 the um, saffron that is used. Um, yeah. And it was one of those Cornish it's herbs. Beautiful. Because it, it's beautiful. It is. We, we use it in, in a lot of dishes. But, of course, the only thing about it, it's a little slightly expensive. It is, yeah. I mean, I, but I, I, I use it in everything. But I know. Yeah, I, I totally I know. agree with what you're saying. So, listen. So, now we've added... The peppers, the yep. fennel, the 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 onions, the chorizo, the passata, the saffron, the uh, the perno. Oh. Chickpeas going now. Okay. And the water for the stem. Ten yeah, stem. Let, let's see if we can get that going. I'm I'm struggling with that one. Let's see. But we do have one we prepared earlier, didn't we? So tarragon now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love this. I love. I mean, it, to. Time, certain times of the year, it's kind of woody. Yep. So you have to pick it. Yep. Um, but now is the the right you, time, yeah, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, that that's 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 what you can eat. So I'm just gonna. Yep. Or you, know. you could always put it in and use it into a vegetable stock with all the other bits of leaves. And you've got. exactly, it's called a bouquet garni. Exactly. Yeah, and leave it and then omit it. Okay, this is Jay. Jay, thank. Can I have some? Okay, perfect. Take that one away. Strain the pan, Jay, please. We're going to see if we can get a bit from the still. Okay, we're going to cook some tender stem broccoli, mate. Straight in, mate. No, that's more than enough. Okay, come and have a look at this fish, guys. So, see how that fish is just turning. We've got a pallet knife, please. Beautiful. 
So how long has that been on? About three minutes, I suppose? I Four minutes? I think you're right. We're lucky we're here at the Harbour Fish and Grill restaurant and we're able to go into their kitchen, which is a superb kitchen. Aaron has been here how long now, Aaron? Six years. Six years, Six years my years, life. Yeah. And, and he has built this up to a wonderful business. You can come here at lunchtime and have the lunch menu, which is a well, we're for lunch in about an hour. In an hour. Now. We're going to be wow. open. So, guys, if you're listening to us now, which we hope you are, obviously, because you can hear us, come in Monday and try some of this wonderful food. The weather is going to be fantastic for the next week. Come and book a table, because I think you need to do that nowadays with all the COVID uh, reg regulations that you've got to do. Give them a call. You'll see all their details on the website. So please come on down, try their food. I know he's been very busy at nights. You're doing... So busy, Andy. I, yeah. I couldn't tell but you. You've got tables if you come at the last moment. It might yeah. be a bit late. Well, we, yeah, well, we have, outside, um, we have outside tables as well. And I don't yeah. take bookings from outside for the simple fact... You don't know what the weather's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, first come, first serve from 6 o'clock in, in the evening. You know? yeah. So... And I'm sure you're going to do something about the new year. There'll be something going on well, all every, those. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how that's going to work things. this year with social distancing, but with, with live music and stuff. But um, I'm thinking about doing a comedian this year. I mean, uh, have a comedian and um, an adult magician, something yeah, a little course. bit different. So it's so. watch the space, really, yeah. Yeah. and listen to what's happening out there, or watch what's happening, and read what's happening. That sounds good. Yeah, we were here last year for New Year's Eve. And it was fantastic. The fireworks nice. go off just down in the harbour. The whole of the bay is lit up. It's a wonderful Jack. place, ladies and gentlemen. Not just at this time Come of year, September. Can you get me a, a lovely bowl and a little year, bit of oil? A little bit of spinach oil, yeah. So where are we now, mate? Big How's... bowl, yeah. No, 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 no. For plates. For plating. So plating. we're not far away from plating no. up. We've just got the tender stem broccoli to I'm go. Weighing, I'm weighing on water. Water's water. Water. Outside, you know. It's near, we're nearly there. I mean, this water is so... Perfect. Thank you. Uh... It's nearly no, there, no, uh, it? uh, Maybe a little bit of oil. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yep. So, yeah, so I've, 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 I've salted the water uh, to the point where it's sea salted. So okay. it's really salty, okay? Because yep. I don't like, to, I don't like to, to salt vegetables afterwards. I like to salt the water. In the old school way, you know, you used no, to no, salt no. your potatoes when yes. making your... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if you have a look at this fish, okay, do you see how it's changing colour? And you can see at the side there, you can see it coming through there, okay? Perfect. So I'm going to turn that fish, okay? And personally, I think that's that'll be done. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to switch it off. I'm going to turn, turn off the pan, okay? And you can okay. see the brown, how, how lovely and uh, crispy yeah, that skin lovely. looks. Looks, because that's important with fish, isn't it? Yeah. Crispy skin. Now we put a bit more butter in there. And, yeah. and, 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 I'm what does that? Base, I'm just going to baste the fish. Okay. Just give it some shine to it. Yep. Okay, and now I'm just going to leave that. And of course, you've got the salt already in the, in the yeah. butter because we're yeah. using a butter, exactly, a salted exactly, butter, aren't exactly. we? Exactly. Honestly, I, Andy, taste that, mate. Honestly. Got to taste. Just the butter. Tasting give butter. A, just taste the butter itself, Andy. Honestly. Let me just leave that on a. Okay, so I'm not going to go. The, okay, so we're waiting for this water to boil. Again. Can we swap pans and then that one? Oh goes. yeah. Is that a good idea? Or? The next one, Andy. If you want to try that, so you know where we're so at. The pipper up. Did it taste like yours last night? I don't did know. I, did yeah, I forget I'm something? I've got that. I don't even yeah. know if I've forgotten something. No, you've got everything. Did, did I get everything in, or did you prompt me to make sure I put everything in? Is that what yours tasted like? Much? You got a few more peppers because I didn't have that oh, many. Okay. In. Right. okay. So, but, but that's you, lovely. But you see the shine and the perno. You know, and the shines come from the chorizo. Yeah. Okay. The the colours come from the saffron. Slow cooked down with the peppers and the and the tomatoes. So you want that? You don't want it too wet. Okay. In the bowl. Okay. Are we boiling? Okay. So the water's boiling now. Okay. That's turned off. And of course we don't. It's only two minutes, isn't it, for this. You want this, to taste the broccoli, don't yeah, you? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I serve when I serve this, this the broccoli at the, the hotel. I, I snap it all down. Yeah. So, so I mean, I really do. And I know it's a bit poncy and it's a little bit. But chef -y, that's that's chef -y, what it's got to be, yeah. isn't it? People expect that little extra yeah. when you go to because you class yourself as what 
not oh, well, fine dining. No, no, but, but we're relaxed fine dining. I work in a pair of shorts, Andy, yeah. you know, and I, and I and I push my staff to, to look relaxed. I don't want people to come here and feel a little bit stuffy. I mean, you're in the harbour. I mean, it's yeah. changing constantly, Andy. Whoops. I know. So, Sorry. Okay, so the water's... Okay, so here we go. So the water's boiling. That, okay. by the way, is Phil Trebilcock, who wants to know if he's landed any crab. Do you want any crab? Uh, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, yeah maybe tomorrow. Oh, next we'll talk to him yeah. in a minute. Yeah, we'll that, with, yeah. That's what all locality is about, is having connections with local people and they'll be able to serve you crabs, yeah. lobster. Yeah. They give you a call and you're that's ready. That's it. Yeah. And you're there. You okay. go. So this tender step broccoli, seriously, will take seconds to cook. Uh, less than a minute. Yeah. Okay. So... While that while we're cooking the, the tender stem broccoli, we're going to start plating up. Okay. okay. So. <sighs> Here yes. he goes again. I, so, I, and so the, the tender stem goes he's in. He's going in. Okay. So when you when you cook green vegetables, everyone, when you cook green vegetables, try and cook it. There's a there's a a, a method called big pot blanching. All right. And what I mean by that is is that you try and keep the water boiling after you've added your vegetables, okay? Because there is a, uh, an enzyme in green vegetables, and if you drop below a certain temperature, okay, it will release the enzyme and it will turn your vegetables brown, okay? Yeah. Hence why you have brown vegetables. So what you want, you want your vegetables to go through that, that, that temperature bracket, I think it's around 80 odd degrees. So you want to hit it 100 degrees as quickly as possible, okay? And once it's cooked, you want it to come through that uh, that uh that that temperature bracket again so ice cold water all right okay so you shouldn't put your sprouts on now for christmas no or in a pan or, or like a kilo of, of sprouts in a pan this big because it will take forever to boil and then that's why they go brown okay so uh, i think we're ready to, to plate so so pipper out in first this i mean this is looks so there's enough there's enough here for for four people yeah. easy for Sheffy. And this is on your menu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's on the menu. Yeah. Okay. I personally think that's more than enough. But of course you need to prepare. And you can always just cook a little bit, because that pepper, you could use other things for it to be used with, couldn't you? You could put a steak on that almost, could you? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't? We, why couldn't you use the mussels? You know? you could, oh. Well, I, in fairness, that's what I did last night. Because I didn't want starter and main course. I thought we'd just go with the whole thing and all this, put the mussels on Honestly, it. Andy, I'm not throwing it's that away. It's taste, That's isn't it? What's going on? Flavour. Okay. See, the tender stem broccoli is done. So we hope you're doing well at home, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you got to this point where we're just about to plate up and then you're going to enjoy this wonderful meal that Aaron's prepared for you today from the Harbour Fish and Grill. Wonderful morning of entertainment in terms of learning how to cook some fabulous dishes. Just doing a bit of chefy stuff. You obviously don't yeah. want to do this at home. I mean, you've got to you can. stick in a copper pot. Cool. Serve, you know, All those things. Or a pot. And... But it's flavour is what he's put into this yeah. into this dish. And it really is looking superb. Thank you. He's just, just clean that up. We're up. ready to go. Do we need lemon or anything? Would you I don't know. I don't, don't think you need no, it, do you? I don't think you, you do. No. I personally would just serve like that. I mean, the, the acid in in the chorizo and the peppers and stuff would be enough. I, I, I think it'll be okay. Okay. All right, there Doesn't you go. Doesn't that look fantastic, ladies and gentlemen? There now, we and we're going to have a big round of applause for Aaron and all the guys here thank at the you. Harbour Fish and Grill. They are superb and big thank you. And it's like that, isn't it? It's, it's like that. We can't you. do anything more, ladies and gentlemen. So we right. could go through the menu, but all I say is go onto our website. You'll see all how to prepare this. You'll see all the ingredients. And again, I'll just repeat it. Please send in your photos. Please tell us what you thought of our first live cooking demonstration for the virtual Newquay Fish was Festival. This, was this really? First time we've ever done this. Oh, okay. So we, we think it's the way forward. We hope it's yeah. the way forward, but we want your... Um, participation and we want your knowledge so feedback is the way feedback forward. Yeah, is please, the, that's yeah, a lovely yeah. word isn't it feedback yeah. okay so once again thank you aaron for oh, all you oh, and, and and this location I'll and be cooking everyone I'll be fantastic cooking, yeah. i'm now going to say that we've got some wonderful music for you while you sit back and eat the meal that you've just prepared or think about things and over to you guys thank you thank you very much Hi, I'm Joe Howarth. I'm going to play you some songs tonight and I hope you enjoy. Do you see? 
see the other side You know where to run when there's nowhere to hide Can't ignore my thoughts, the truth inside Heart glide, you know what to say. Could I help you decide? Explore the truth, the truth can hide. Cause it's you and me, and I'm not gonna give up easily. Cause it's you and me, and I'm not giving up so easily. So easily. Time before you make up your mind With this mountain to climb Don't turn your back on me now Make it work somehow Cause it's you Be 
blessed with love. And as the fitting grows, she breathes flesh into my bones when I feel the love is dead. Take me. I'm loving angels instead. Oh. Of love and affection, whether I'm right or wrong, and down the waterfall, wherever it may take me, I know the life won't break me when I come to call. She won't forsake me. I'm loving angels instead. Tommy 
down, oh baby. And I'd like to pass you over to our wonderful RNLI here in Newquay, who do a fantastic job. And I'd like to say on behalf of the Newquay Fish Festival, and I'm sure on behalf of the whole of the residents of Newquay and surrounding areas, a big thank you to Newquay RNLI for everything they do. And here's a little piece that's been put together just to show you what they do. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to pass you over to a very special person in all our hearts here in Newquay, and that lady is Chrissy Jackson. Hello, I'm Chrissy, um, and happy Fish Festival weekend. Um, it's a very strange one. Um, I've popped down the harbour to just go, I love it down here, I love it so much. And I hope you all do too. And what a strange old year we had. So I'm Chrissy. Um, I was heavily involved with the Fish Festival in previous years. Um, and the Fish Festival is just absolutely amazing. I've um, got some very cherished memories of it. Um, I think some of my favourites have been um, the Rain Club singers, the boys singing, um, and of, of course, Newquay Town Band playing outside, and, and just all the music and the fun and the laughter that's come with it. It's been brilliant. Thank you so much to everybody. Cherish memories. And of course, um, Stella Jenkin, um, she passed away last year, bless her, um, but she was absolutely amazing. She, uh, she was heavily involved and she uh, used to. Uh, uh, Skip her, her body's rubbish if all else failed. <laughs> but she was a force to be reckoned with. She was amazing. So, um, very happy memories. Um, Alan Goella, of course. Um, love those boys to pieces. Um, so, I'm Chrissy. I'm Chrissy Jackson. I live in Newquay. I've been heavily involved with the Fish Festival over the years. Unfortunately, I've not been involved for the last couple of years because um, January last year I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, Unfortunately, it's terminal, um, it's, it's spreading across my body, um, so they can't cure it, but they can prolong my life, so we love prolong, prolong's good. So, happy Fish Festival. Um, I started um, Chris's Sunshine Appeal um, last year, and so far we've raised uh, 40,000, which is absolutely amazing, over 4,000 of which has gone to Nuki RNLI here, because um, those boys are um, just incredible, aren't they? Um, so, Cherish every day, um, very strange fish, 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 fish festival, I can't even say it. <laughs> um, I know, um, but you know, keep safe everybody and um, I'm sure next year um, it'll be back in full swing. <laughs> Happy Fish Festival! We now have our third letter from a young girl, Victoria, to her uncle John about her forthcoming holiday. Written by Anne Masters and read by Jessica Bailey. Dear Uncle John, I was so pleased to receive the postcard from you, and it arrived on my birthday. The picture of the beach looks lovely. Was it done by someone who lives near you in Newquay? Do you know the artist? Granny bought me a dress for my birthday. It is white with red ribbons, and I really like it. Grandpa has been very kind also, and has given me five whole shillings. He has told me to buy something nice while I'm on holiday, and to be sure that I show, what, show them what it is when I go home. We are very much looking forward to seeing you in July. We'll be travelling by train from Exeter, and we'll be staying for three weeks at the Great Western Hotel. With love from your niece, Victoria.
someone Beyond the sea Somewhere waiting for me My lover stands on golden sands And watches the ships that go sailing Somewhere Beyond the sea She's right there watching for me And if I could fly like birds on high Then straight to her arms I'll go say It's far Beyond the stars It's near beyond the moon I know Beyond a doubt My heart will leave me That soon we'll We'll meet beyond that shore I will kiss just like before So happy we will be Beyond the sea And never again I'll go say Just like before So happy we will be Beyond the sea And never again I'll go say No more sailing Bye bye sailing Sail on, sail on, sail on Shine like you've had too much wine That's the Bells will ring, ting-a-ling-a-ling Ting-a-ling-a-ling And we'll sing the bell Hearts will play Tippy-tippy-tay, tippy-tippy-tay Like the gay tide and well, the stars make you the rules Use it like a bust of fazool And some more When you dance down the street With a cloud on your feet You're alive When you walk in a dream And you know you're not dreaming So you're all right Excuse me, but you see Back in all Napoli, that's the morning. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's the morning. That's the morning. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's the morning. That's the morning. 
bells will ring. Ding a ling a ling. Ding a ling a ling. And you'll sing Peter Bella. Peter Bella. Watch will play. Tick it, tick it, tay, tick it, tick it, tay. Like a great tarantella. Street with a cloud at your feet, you're in love. When you walk in the dream, and you know you're not dreaming, soon you're all right. Excuse me, but you see back in all Napoli, that's the morning. That's the more. Hey! Why marimba rhythm start to play? Dance with me, make me sway. Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore Hold me close, sway me more Like a flower bending in the breeze Stand with me, sway with ease When we dance, you have a way with me Stay with me, sway with me Other dancers may be on the floor but my eyes will see only you Only you have that magic technique When we sway, I go weak I can hear the sound of violins Long before it begins Makes me thrill as only you know how Sway me smooth, sway me low may be on the floor Dear, but my eyes will see only you Only you have that magic technique When we sway, I go with I can hear the sound of violins Long before it begins Makes sure me thrill as only you know how Sway me smooth, sway me high I'm John Fish and I'm the head chef at the Merry Moor in Morgan Port. Um, started back in 1990 when I joined the army. Joined the army and um, went to their army school of catering in Aldershot. Um, all sorts really, but I like to cook with um, fresh fish, um, taking sort of a, a simple fish, adding a few ingredients to turn it into a really nice fish. Um, right, if it was lunchtime, it would have to be the fish finger sandwich. Um, very simple, beer battered fish goujons in um, nice fresh bread. And in the evening, if it was today, it would have to be the um, hake loin with a 
David Stowe crumb and a bean stew cassoulet. Um, when I was growing up, loved to um, watch Keith Floyd on the telly, his early programs and stuff like that. Really got me interested in it. Um, just, just the beauty, really. Um, the simplicity of everything around you, and, and yeah, just the atmosphere and everything. Um, how diverse it is, um, something for everybody. Um, from the, the little fish stalls to the street food, um, demonstrations, the singing, Nuki Rowan Club singers, brilliant to watch. Fourthly, we have a letter from Joseph, a young man in Newquay, writing to his mum at home on the farm. Written by Judith Fox and read by Jean Lenton. My dearest Ma, hope all is well with you and Pa on the farm. I have good news. I am now that you are at Newquay, having beaten several other men to the position. My hut is on the headland above the arbour and should be cosy when the fire is lit. Maybe you and Wenna could come visit me here sometimes, as I'll be lonely as I keep watch for the pilchards. Did I explain to you what my job is? It's very important. I have to keep a lookout during the daylight hours and sometimes on a clear night for the signs that there are pilchard shoals in the bay. As soon as I spot them, I have to shout, Heva, Heva, at the top of my voice. This means here they are. I shall have to be careful I don't fall asleep and miss them. <laughs> when the fishermen in the town hear my shout, they will rush to man their boats and set off to catch the fish. Spotting the pilchards is not the end of my duties. I have to direct the fishermen to the shoals by waving firs branches in semaphore-like signals. <laughs> I've had to quickly learn semaphore. A bit of history for you. It is thought that previously the hut was used as an hermitage and the hermit was entrusted to light a beacon to guide shipping to the harbour. The building has been here since the 14th century but apparently was restored in the 1830s. I think, Ma, that I could now ask Wenna to become my wife. Oh. My wages are much better than those I earned as an humble fisherman, and I should be able to afford a little cottage by the harbour. I can't wait to see her. Your loving son, Joseph. Oh. Now I'd like to pass you over to Mount Charles Band, who traditionally have always played on our Friday nights, and they have always done the last night of the proms, and you've always been able to stand up and wave your flags. That's How you doing, doing mate? Yeah. Oh, it's nice to see you. It's, it's oh, nice to be back in the band. Oh, there's a bit of only gigs there, isn't it? Well, oh, you know, it'd be nice to have at least, at ones, least one gig. It would be nice to have one gig. All the gigs are cancelled, you know? It's really around, you know. You know, it's, what? it's annoying, really. It is. What are we going to do? Well, you know? I don't know. We could we drink, drink beer. New Key Fish Festival. New Fish Festival? Yeah. Hey? Cancel, isn't it? No. No. No? No, it can't be now. Right now. We're doing a virtual it's one. Right now. And it's virtual. Oh, good luck, mate. Good luck. Oh, we better get on this then. Sorry. Um, wear your jacket. Hat. I need a stick. Welcome to Nuki Fish Festival 2020. We're the Mount Charles Band, and this is Abbott's Mamma Mia. Oh, one, two, three,
Hi, I'd just like to pass you over now to one of the very important people of Newquay uh, Harbour, and that's Julian Waring, who represents the Fisherman's Mission. Hello, my name's Julian from the Fisherman's Mission. I'm based in Helston in Cornwall, but today I'm in the lovely old harbour of Newquay. And I'm here today to talk to you about our charity. Unfortunately, we can't be here. We'd normally have a stall, but it's great that the innovative committee have decided to go virtually. So I'm talking to you from the lovely warm harbour into your living room. And I want to tell you a little bit about our charity and a project that we did some years ago. So some years ago, we did a book called Sea Salt and Solitude, and it was based up on the north coast here from Newquay through to Padstow and Port Isaac. And the volunteer photographer and writer captured some great, impressive images and stories of fishermen and the families how the fishermen and the community survive in what can be quite a harsh environment. Fishing is the most dangerous occupation in peacetime. So the support that we give to fishermen is vital when things do go badly wrong. So the book, you're gonna see some images from it. They've got some well-known characters, some well-loved big characters from Nuki. And they give you a little narrative, they give you a little story about their life. And of course, there are going to be those tragic incidents, but there are going to be those fun stories of catching mermaids too. Some tall tales maybe of the, of the uh, sizes of fish that they catch. The Fisherman's Mission is a charity that's front facing. So we're down here at the harbour side, which has been particularly difficult during the pandemic. So we have been using technology to keep in touch with the fishermen and the families. We support in many ways when people are unwell. Uh, when there's been relationship breakdowns, supporting fishermen's widows, supporting those who've had had those tragedies and need that support. So if you can support in any way, please do so. If you want to have a look at our book, then you can go to our fishmishmarket.org.uk forward slash shop or go onto our website, fishermansmission.org.uk and you can have a look at the book. The book has been reduced to 10 pounds. And for every one of those pounds, 88 pence is spent on those services provided to fishermen and their families who are in real need. The pandemic has caused a lot of poverty, a lot of need because the markets have crashed. The need for fish has, has waned in those months and the fishermen are self-employed and they couldn't work. So please, whatever you can do, support us, it'd be great. We would love to have seen you in person down here on a lovely sunny day uh, in person, but we can't. But thanks for listening and we hope you can support. And lastly, a letter from Elsie, who now lives in Hull, to her sister Sally, living in Cornwall. Written by Andy Fox and read by Judith Fox. My dearest sister, I'd started to write to you when a knock at the door made me change the entire content of my letter. I am sad to report that your youngest nephew, William, has been killed whilst fishing in the North Sea after his trawler, Crane, was sunk. The survivors have said that on 21st of October, six to seven trawlers left Hull to fish around Dogger Bank. As oft is the case there, the night was foggy and the boats were surprised by a fleet of Russian warships. Russians, can you believe it? And what would they be doing of around there? I was told that our boats were mistaken for Japanese torpedo boats and fired upon by the Ruskies. Japan and Russia is having a war, I think. But why they would reckon the Japs to be off England is beyond me. We're having to wait till his dad gets home from his voyage to Iceland to hold a funeral. I wish he were here now. I miss you so much too, Sally, since you moved so far away to Cornwall. I don't suppose you could manage on the train now that winter's setting on. If you could leave Arthur for a while, though, I'd be that happy to see you. Don't know what else to say, really. 
fishing is dangerous enough, what with the storms and all, without being shot at. For now, your loving sister, Elsie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody who's taken part before I pass you over to what has always been the tradition in Newquay Fish Festival is the Newquay Harbour Rowing Club Singers. Um, but before I do that, I think it's only fitting that we should say a big thank you to everybody who's been involved in putting on tonight's show. Ice Cold Gorilla, they've done all the filming, impact, sound and light. They've been helping with all the production. We've got Jonathan Stark with the Stark Company, who've been fantastic in sponsoring us this evening. Uh, Newkey Bid, who, with the help of all the local businesses, have been very, very supportive. And of course, Fresh Point, and it goes without saying, the RNLI and all the other organisations that are based down here in our wonderful Newkey Harbour that we love to be able to put on for you this virtual fish festival this year and our hope is that next year we're going to be able to go live from the harbour as we have traditionally done the dates we have yet to be announced but as soon as we do that then we'll put those on the website for you all to be able to put into your diaries for next year. Our hope is that you all stay safe, our hope is that you enjoy what we've put on to for you tonight and also please tell your friends because it will be able to be seen in future because we'll put it there for you to be able to play as many times as you want on our new key fish festival website um, i hope you've all enjoyed ourselves we've certainly had a, a ball in putting this together and uh, without further ado i'd like to pass you over to all the guys from the Newquay Rowing Club who are going to sing as they always have done with our traditional Cornish songs. Thank you to one and all for helping us put this on. Thank you to everybody who's participated and thank you for, to Newquay residents and its community. Without those, we in Newquay Fish Festival, we are, wouldn't be able to put on this fantastic event. Big thank you from all of us. Thank you. These boys are Newquay Rowing Club singers, Cornwall's oldest boy band. We're here at the Fly Cellars today to give you a virtual song for a virtual fish festival. Normally we'd be down at the harbour performing to you live and getting your feedback and having a whale of a time, but we've got to do it digitally this year. So here's our clip for the Newquay Virtual Fish Festival 2020. Now when they sing of Cornwall, there's one way to begin To tell the story of the men of copper, fish and tin From the sea that's all around us, to way below the ground The memory of these mighty men is gathered all around So let's hear it for glory Let's hear it for Terrific, with his engine steaming by. Let's hear it for the farmers and for the fishermen. Let's hear it for the miners, who we hope will mine again. Now from the engine houses, they scatter around Carnbray. To the white and also landscape, still in the China clay. From the harbours here at Newquay, at Pasto and at Blue, the lighthouse of the Wolf Rock shows what Cornish men can do. So let's hear it for Trony, may his army never die. Let's hear it for Trevithick, with his engine steaming by. Let's hear it for the farmers and for the fishermen. 
Let's hear it for the miners, who we hope will mine again. The Cornwall's past is mighty, it was built by mighty men. And as Cornish men, we hope those times will come again. Or do we let our mining, our fishing round us fall? Not if we stick together with our motto, one and all. So let's hear it for Trelawney, may his army never die. Let's hear it for Trebithic, with his engine steaming by. Let's hear it for the farmers and for the fishermen. Let's hear it for the miners, who we hope will mine again. Now when you cross the Tamar into this promised land, there's one thing to remember, one thing to understand. Black Cornwall's not a county, just sighted in the west. Black Cornwall is our country, the land we love the best. So let's hear it for Trelawney, may his army never die. Let's hear it for Trebithic, with his engine steaming by. Let's hear it for the farmers and for the fishermen. Let's hear it for the miners who we hope will find again. Bye. 